I'm different on another issue or on related and like in related news. That video, I decided to call it the two faces of Barack Obama. And for a very important reason, I decided to call it the two faces of Barack Obama. Originally, the idea was about the renegade. Like, like what is, why did the CIA and FBI or rather the Secret Service, why did they call Obama like his, his code name would be the renegade? as well as the code names for the other members of the family are interesting, but we'll deal with, like, Obama first. Why do they call him the renegade? What does the word renegade really mean? And then seeing that a lot of the people who supported Obama, such as the Tavis Smileys, the Cornel West, and many others have been lately very disappointed in Obama, at least the fact he hasn't really seemed to champion the cause of the poor, has been more in a sense, in the corporate interest, or at least to the certain mainstream. As a president, in a sense, if, if it wasn't for the fact that he's black or that he looks black or people take him to be black, in other words, he would, even the Republican, the Tea Party, should be congratulating him. But see, the Tea Party and a lot of those others, even some of the Negroes they got down with him, they're on this kind of psycho babble that he's an African. It's, it's the whole thing about he's an African or he's not really... American. That's what even the, the Alex Jones is. Alex Jones put out the video before Obama did, did beep, before he did this or that. Alex Jones already had the video out. So Alex Jones would say, well, he criticized President Bush and, 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 and Clinton, and he's fair and square, but not really. Not really. I think he's more part of it, you know, and those that remember the William, the Bill Cooper incident, and the different incidences with Alex Jones, really see that he, he reminded me of an agent. You know, he's like he's like an agent. Maybe not a Mr. Smith directly, but like that helicopter pilot in The Matrix where the agent dialed down in him and used him. So he, he's questionable, very questionable, seeing that he doesn't want to deal with Rastafari at the spiritual level, the real level. He want to kind of like, you know, mock Rastafari and the Beta Israel, the Israelite, our persuasions. That means he can't see the full picture. He's blinded. But anyway, before Obama did anything, there were some folks that already predicted he's going to do this or that. And so far, he, he, he hasn't. They say he's going to be weak on the war. So far, he, he really hasn't. He's increased it more and, in a sense, got more success than even um, Baby Bush on that level. Now, one could say, well, that's because Baby Bush, well, Baby Bush was doing um, he didn't have time to allow it to, like, marinate. So, therefore, Obama is getting it, you know, you know, Obama is benefiting on what George Bush, like, George Bush planted the seed, but Obama is kind of reaping it. So that's how politically they'll talk about it. But the reason why we had, and, and, and we struggled to find the right name for the particular video. So we, in the video, we talk about two different Egyptian-like um, templates two possible, you know, two possible ways. One is the Obama Apophis, Obama and Apophis, right, as one. Then the Barack and Unkenantin or, or Kuenantin or Unkenantin, because that's what um, Freeman perspective and certain others had noticed the link between Obama and Unkenantin of 18th, the 18th dynasty of Egypt. And so that's what a lot of people are saying, oh, he's a reincarnation, he's a, he's a clone, or he could be a clone of the DNA, so on and so on. That's been Freeman Perspective's perspective. And there might be something to that a little bit, though it's a little bit of a stretch, because even when he says that his, his um, wife, uh, Michelle, is Queen T, well, T in the whole system of things in Egypt was Uncle Nunton's mother, and not his wife. His wife was was um, uh, uh, Nefertiti, but they never found Nefertiti's. Allegedly, they never found her her remains. So I guess they couldn't, you know, clone that DNA, so to speak. But it's a little stretch, but it does bring something to mind. But in our video, we take it one step beyond, like where Freeman perspective took it. Basically, we're looking at it on the other side, the Obama process where some of those from the Stargate, you know, the Stargate SG-1, so forth and so on, have seen that link between Apophis and 
Obama, in other words, the apostates of the Stargate series and what we see or what we've witnessed with Obama president. So therefore, we said, all right, we'll coin him Obamapathist, Obamapathist. But then we noticed in that video that we just recently did, the 40, 42 or so minute video, we noticed that there's these two different Obamas. There's actually two, it's like the picture where he's looking both ways. There's these two different Obamas. And I don't know if people can really notice that clearly. And I'm sure he's struggling, too, to kind of reconcile this, this duality. There's this duality with Obama that's very interesting. Because we have, on one hand, all the hopes and expectations of what Obama was going to be, this, this kind of... Um, this this change, change, change leader. On another hand, it's almost becoming chain, 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 and change. In other words, this is not the change. Now people have gone from dollar bills to pocket change in this economy. Although he is not chiefly responsible for all these things that were already in the making from generations before, one can look at the, the decisions he made why he had that opportunity in the first year or two of his presidency, he did not really take, he took more of a compromising line, even though he could have saved that, um, as, as Bush said, um, uh, what did Bush call his political capital? He could have saved his political capital for when he would have really needed it, like now, in case his, he should have taken a harder line, and he really didn't take a harder line. And that kind of blows back. Maybe he's trying to dispel this kind of image that ones like um, the Alex Jones and the rest of these conspiracy theorists have put out there and trying to dispel that image. He took the course, you know, where he's really trying to please both sides of it. But you can see there's these two different Obamas. There's the one Obama Apophis, which is the Obama Apophis, and the other one is the Barack I ten or the Barack Unkenunten in that sense. Now, here's what's very interesting. There's the two faces of Obama. Mm. And since he will be the president, or at least, you know, Jah or God forbid anything happens to him, he will be the president in December 21st, 2012, around that time. Even if somebody else is elected, he'll still be the one until January. You know the whole, the, the, uh, the auguries, inauguration, the auguries and, and the inauguration, which actually goes back to witchcraft, basically, the whole auguries and inauguration. You know, it's about reading the fortunes through birds, you know, like telling what, what do we have good, good luck or bad luck based on the birds, you know. So it's something about the birds right there. But now, we finally came up with a better name. And I think it's just kind of interesting to kind of explain a little bit of the background of some of these videos because it explains some, it gives some detail, but then some say that it adds a little more mystery. So that it's kind of explain a little bit more of the mystery, why we call it the two faces of Barack Obama. It's because there's these two different faces. Some speculate that while Obama has played it safe in his first four years, three to three or so years, is because people expected him to do the more radical thing, the more Barakanatan or the Barakatan thing. Because if you look at Unkenunten from a strictly a point of view of patriotic Egypt, Barakatan or Unkenunten rather, the one who they say discovered or brought back or was the first monotheist, quote, end quote. You got to put a big quotation mark around the first monotheist because the ancient Egyptians were Yahwist and were monotheists in their pre-dynastic age. You understand? So it's nothing really new like one God. They try to say that, that, that um, Unkenunten discovered one God and that Moses was inspired by Unkenunten when actually the truth of it is reverse is that Unkenunten was inspired by Moses, that Moses and the Israelites went before the period of time that you might know in Egyptology as Unkenunten. And we can prove that, that the pharaoh of the Exodus was Tutmos III, 
you understand, was took most a third, was the most logical candidate from a variety of overlapping reasons to be that Pharaoh of the Exodus. So when we look at the end of the 18th dynasty, here's where we get Unkenunten. And Unkenunten was on a different kind of philosophy. He was on this kind of philosophy that, that Barack Obama was, was um, teasing, I won't say teasing the people, but it, it, it's, the Barack, it's Barack Obama of his run-up of, of, of 2008 and of his campaign. You understand? The campaign was a strictly, almost a perfect Uncle You understand? And, and, and the image still of the family is very much the Uncle image. But somehow he has chosen not to go that particular course of demolishing the false gods and presenting at least an image of a one God. He, he hasn't really brought that about because that would entail him destroying the old gods or going against the old priesthood. And instead what he sought to do was to, to try to, what they call it, um, be bipartisan. See that bipartisan sense? That's the two faces right there. He sought to be bipartisan. That means be a little Republican for the Republicans to try to win them over, and then be a little Democratic. For the, but, he, but he really hasn't really done for his side, besides the health care, so forth and so on. But still, in spite of that, he thought by being bipartisan, he would bring the Republicans who represent that old priesthood, like the, the false Amen priesthood, just like the Republicans represent the counterfeit Christians, you know, the counterfeit Christians, because even though they are evangelical, so forth and so on. The form of their Christianity is not the Christianity of the Word of God or of the Bible. It, it, it's, a very, it's a very warped and very anti-Christian, even in, in the sense of racism and slavery and white supremacy and Uncle Tom niggers. Like right now what they're trying to do is put Cain, Cain, that black African-American indigenous nigger, against Obama. In other words, it's the old Willie Lynchism of the young black male versus the old black male, the old black male versus the young black male. And look forward to it because if Cain still keep, continues to build his white support, then we're going to see more of that and they might bring him either as the front runner if he's strong enough to lead the Republican um, campaign or he might be a, like a vice president but still will be the first African-American president versus the first African-American vice president or perhaps the first Democrat African-American president versus the first potential uh, Republican so-called African-American president. But it's the old Willie Lynchism, the old black nigger versus the young black nigger, the young black nigger versus the old black nigger. It, it's, it's all in line with Willie Lynch because Willie Lynch is their main template and behooves us not to look at it as so-called historical, but more in the sense of mythological or symbolic. It's a symbolic logic that may manifest differently esoterically. But esoterically, you know, the exo, the, the, the outer level, may change. It may change outer things. But the inner working, the inner operation still remains according to this logical Woolly Lynchism template. And Woolly Lynchism has served, it, has served this racist, white supremacist, Gentile age perfectly. And anybody who, you know, especially our people who don't want to really recognize the role of how to make a slave and Woolly Lynchism as a template, and what ones have to wrap their minds around is get beyond the outer slave, 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 nigga, nigga, nigga thing and get to the mathematical logistics of it. You understand the old black nigga versus the young black nigga. This is what you already, uh, this is why they say so many people are excited about Cain. Even though Cain is not a political guy, you understand, and has no political experience, but he's a successful um, so-called black African-American native nigger. You know, he's a, he's a successful native nigger. And he's coming out talking about the, the people who are at the Wall Street thing, a bunch of lazy bums. They don't want to work. They're against capitalism, even though they're against corruption. But he said they're against ca capitalism. They're against people who made it. That's a typical nigger. That, that is, that, that is yes-ums, no-sums. 
that's perfect nigga. Even though he may have pointed out the Perry thing, the nigga head thing, because he want to work on the PC thing. That's insensitive, so forth and so on. And then cut into the, the front run. And I'm not even sure it was his own volition that he thought of this, but others in his camp who are putting money on him to cut into Obama's, you understand, know to cut into Obama's potential black vote. And there's some black people who would really vote for Cain and cross lines from the Democrat to the Republican because people are dissatisfied with the whole Democrat thing and people expect it more from Barack Obama, especially black folks, the poor people. They, they expected this, this new guy. They expected this uh, Barackerton. They expected for him to wipe out the, the old priesthood, you understand, and, and, and take their names off and bring this new kind of religion. But what he did was the uh, Apophis. And see, here's what Apophis did, and here's what you have to understand. Apophis is that old serpent. And Apophis symbolizes, in, in Revelation, it symbolizes that old dragon. And that old dragon is about war and militarism. What Obama had to prove, what they made him feel guilty about, is that he's not a military guy, he don't know nothing about war, the country be less safe, almost like his manhood, his, his, his political manhood. He has to prove that. So he killed Obama. He killed this this other guy too, this Al Laki. You know what I mean? He's been he's been more aggressive against the terrorists. He's been using drones. He's been more in a sense of a war president. This is why when in our um, pictures that we show some of the slides and others, we use him with the war crown. He he's wearing that war crown of ancient Egypt. He already has the South and North because he won so handsomely. In, in both the Republican circles and Republican districts as well as in Democratic districts. In other words, he, he, he won in both the red and the blue, so to speak. You understand? Now he has to win that war crown. He has to prove that he is a, he is a warrior. You understand? Because he probably figures and people in his party figure that if he didn't do these things and there was another terrorist attack or so forth and so on, people say, see, this guy, he's a nice guy, he, he tells wonderful speeches, so forth and so on. He's a likable guy, but he's not quite the warrior that we really need. We need a war president. But in order for him to be obama he's had to sacrifice the Barakatan, especially in this economic time. If the economics wasn't so bad, he could have actually done both. But he had to choose. Now it seems as though he's trying to come back on that Barakatan side and talk to the, you know, more jobs, his jobs bill, programs, try and say that, listen, I was bipartisan, I was, I was trying to work with you guys, and you guys didn't do anything, so forth and so on. So that is the, that's a, that's, a, that's, that's a rough synopsis of what's behind the two faces of Obama. Now, seeing that we still have more than a, a little more than a year, because it's not December, it's not November yet, so we have about, 12 months, roughly, to the 2012 election. And then we have a couple more months, like, like well, one more month, until December 21st, 2012. And they said that's the big doomsday, Armageddon day. There's a great social change. And we're already beginning to see this social upheaval. We can say, in a sense, it began in full earnest with the Arab Spring. One of Obama's former... Um, Operatives, I uh, forgot the brother's name right now, but he calls it the um, something about the American autumn or something like that. The American autumn with the with the, the Occupy Wall Street and the Occupy Wall Street protests are picking up all over the country. Other people are resonating to that. So far, they don't view Obama overall as the chief enemy. I think where most of the people feel that Obama hasn't been strong enough on the issues. He's been too compromising. Now, what we might see in Obama is less compromise over the next 12 months. Is more because he's recognizing, listen, his, his, his poll rating has gone down and down and down. People are very dissatisfied, even though there doesn't appear to be anyone else on the other side or even the Democratic Party who they are more moved by. But Obama has, you know, so, so Obama has, has had to divide his, his and, 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 and notice this, not many people could do this. 
I mean, I mean, we're not trying to say he's a genius for doing this, but not many people could effectively do this. Just like he showed his Obama profist nature, he could still show the Barakatan nature. But the thing about the Barakatan nature that we have to understand is more than just a change, change, a, 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 a brave new world sort of thing. It means that he would have to stop focusing on the wars that are going on and has to start focusing more on the, we could say, the spiritual state of the spiritual Egyptian people or the American people. And this means that he would have to go against the entrenched, the old guards. Not the old gods so much, but the old guards. And the old guards have been fighting him vigorously. See, and the old guards are actually the Apophis. The Republicans are actually the Apophis. So when we say Obama Apophis, we're saying he's trying to be a little bit like Reagan. This is who he said he not idolized, but he thinks Reagan was real effective about what he did because Reagan came in and everything changed. And people thought, well, if Obama is a Democrat and he's saying all this, this, this kind of socialistic policies, because he's been ashamed to really say, yes, I'm about a more of a socialism in America. I'm more about taking from the rich and giving to the poor. Because some people say this is a political thing, too. If, he, if he's come out like that too soon, he would ruin his chances in 2012. Some say he might have already ruined his chances in 2012. But Obama is a pretty amazing guy. Who is this guy? Well, we say you have to look at the two faces of Obama. You understand? And we're looking at it from an ancient Egyptian paradigm because Revelation tells us we're in a spiritual Egypt. We're in a spiritual Egypt right now. So do we have Obama Pephis or do we have Barakatan? That's what we, we call the video, sub, subtitle of the video, Obama Pephis versus Barakatan, the renegade pharaoh. But the question is, who will he be renegade for? Will he become a renegade to those interests, those behind-the-scene Wall Street, big money, and Bilderberg and interests that put him in there? Or will he be a renegade to those people who believe in his hopes and dreams, the audacity of his so-called hope that is turning out, sadly, to be a joke for a lot of people? Because a lot of folks, you know, are saying they're not better off right now. Now, what is Obama going to do about this? And, and really, what can he do? Because he's so now entrenched in the Apophis part of his nature that to really bring the life to the Aten. The Aten is, that, is, is, his, is his symbol. If you look at the Obama symbol that he used while he was running that, you know, that rising sun, that the Aten is the, is the sun, is the, is the Edah, what we call the outline, the eclipse of the sun, the outline of the sun with the hands. But see, there's been no hands in the Apophis, but there's been this, this Leviathan, there's been this dragon, there's been this war, there's been this, 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 um, I, I can you say, almost the, 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 this, this double, this double cross. In a sense, a lot of folks are really upset with Obama. But I still think Obama might have a chance of, of, of reclaiming or redeeming that. But we really can't give him advice on what he needs to do. But with the prophetic vision, what we're seeing is the two faces the two faces of Obama. Obama Pephis on one hand and the Barakatan on the other. Unfortunately, he gave us Barakatan in the run up. He gave us this 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 brave new world. Right? And for the Arabs and the Arab Spring, it's like it's translated for them differently. Maybe because they're outside of this Republican Democrat situation. You understand? But in the American sense, especially with the economy and how much compromise and how he really didn't, he really hasn't held the business interest. In fact, one last thing I'm going to say about this right now. Obama said something that was very interesting, and we heard Charlie Rose and a couple of others quote this, and we'll leave off on this part right here with this, is that Obama said to the Wall Street, the business interest, he says, I am the only thing that has been standing between you and the pitchfork. Mm. That's very 
very interesting that Obama would say to the same Wall Street interests that I'm the only thing standing in the bank, the Wall Streets and the banks and everything. I'm the only thing standing between you and the pitchfork. In other words, Obama is the only thing that stood between Wall Street and the real hell and chaos and mayhem that would have happened if he had taken a different line, a different course of action. You have to remember that Obama's popularity when he first got in there was so strong, almost like Uncle Unton, that he could have said, down with the old guards, down with them. You understand? Let's take them out. They ruined the country. They ruined the dream. And people would have acted on that. Instead, getting into the Oval Office, he chose, or it was chosen for him, to advance this Illuminati or this Illuminist, this Leviathan interest of both the corporation. Remember, Leviathan is the corporations. Leviathan is the banking interest. Leviathan is the slave master Wall Street interest. Leviathan is all those interests. Now, Leviathan is not just American anymore, limited to America or England and America, but it's gone global. It actually has gone global. So it's not just that Obama is Opophis on one hand or he's Barakatan, but he has both of those natures. He's projected to us who understand the ancient mysteries. And you have to remember that D.C., Washington, D.C., is built, and much of America and England and the white supremacist structure is built on what they understand and comprehend of the mysteries of ancient Egypt. But the thing that they don't recognize, that the seed recognize, is the inner part of the mystery. So what we're looking at now is the inner part of the mystery that many of them probably haven't even been able to to, to really touch on. Everybody's caught up on the Barakatan thing. But we're not seeing Barakatan. You see, if we were seeing Barakatan, like we said, he would have forgotten about, you know, the wars and all these other things and focused more attention. He would have brought the troops home, regardless of what would have happened over there. And actually, the only interest that's being served with the troops over there is the corporate interest. You know, if the truth must be told, people say it, it makes things more at peace. But most of these... Um, you know, most of the so-called terrorists were already outside of that whole interest, and they didn't, I doubt they learned anything in Afghanistan that really aided them, you understand, to doing anything over here. So a lot of that's just been hype and everything. That's been a, mis, a misdirection. But really who it benefits is the corporate interest. And the corporate interest is also the Tea Party and the Republican interest. They're against him not for his really policies. They understand that he's probably one of the best presidents, and, and it, we're hard-pressed to say this, but Obama's probably one of the best presidents, and some people might not think so. What about the poor people? No, he's one of the best presidents if you understand what he's had to work with for who he is, you understand, and in the position he's in. This is why we say over and over, brothers and sisters, even though he might have been and still is in certain interests that we are not of, Still, the Bible commands us and advises us to pray for these kings and these rulers and authorities. Why? So that we will be at peace. You understand? And so that we would have a peaceable, quiet life and we can fulfill the will of God in Christ. So that's, that's one of the, it's not, it might sound selfish, but even in that sense, for us as true Christians and the true elect Rastafari, that's the reason why we should even pray for him, you understand, and pray for them as well. Even those Republicans, too, if they're, if they're in office and if their vote or their decision does anything for or against us, then we need to put them in our Father's hands, you understand, and, and let our Father know and, and our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that we trust him whatever he want to do about this, because we're coming to him with these situations. You understand? And that's one thing that um, is, is sorely lacking today, is that spiritual power. Anyway, brothers and sisters, shalom, more to come on this, y'all willing. So stay tuned.